Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Surface Sessions. Today, we're looking at the Surface Pro 6, we're looking at latency, we're looking at the onboard audio, and we're looking at something called ASIO for all. Because I'm in the business of trying to make the Surface Pro 6 into a awesome music making device, and it absolutely has that potential. But one of the key things to that is to ensure that it's able to generate high quality, glitch-free, low latency audio. And in this video, I want to look at how you achieve that using the onboard sound. Now the onboard sound. Now I know it would probably be far better to use a USB audio interface, something like my audio fuse that I have sitting here. Yes, indeed, using a USB audio interface is definitely the best way of getting low latency audio into and out of the Surface Pro 6. However, many people would like to use the onboard audio. It's got a headphone socket right here that you can plug into, you can be on the bus, you can be making your tunes, and that kind of thing. So why shouldn't you use the onboard sound? You know, just every now and again. Well, indeed, you can, and hopefully this video will show you how you do that. Now, when we're talking about latency, what do we mean? Well, we mean this. Latency is the amount of time it takes between the hitting of a key on your keyboard and hearing the sound. It's the length of time it takes for the computer to go, oh, look, a key's been hit, right, go make the sound, make the sound, oh, there's a sound out to the outputs. It's that amount of time. Every system, every computer system has latency to one degree or another because a computer always takes a finite time to process the information and send it to the outputs. Now, we experience that in the delay we hear or feel between hitting a key and hearing the sound. I mean, this is obviously crazy and completely useless, but that's how Windows drivers for onboard sound used to be. There used to be a standard buffer built in. Buffer is a space of memory of about half a second, so that when you press play in media player, it wouldn't start immediately. It would pause and then start playing back, but the playback would be perfect. There'd be no glitching, no messing about, and it would work on every system regardless of how crappy that computer was. And that's Microsoft's job, is to make sure Windows works on every single device that can run it. Now that's not so good for us trying to make music because we want a computer that runs at quite a high level that's able to maintain a completely glitch-free, stable audio stream at all times really, really quickly. Quick enough to make it feel like, well not like that, but at real time. Now thankfully, Microsoft have been working on this and certainly within Windows 10, in recent updates, the latency for the Windows drivers has got better and better. It's now down to a point where it is kinda, more or less, playable. And this is using the very latest Wasapi architecture and that brings in a low latency mode that manufacturers and developers can write for so that their piece of software can produce a stable stream of audio at low latency, at playable latency. So let's have a quick look at that. So within my Arturia piano that I've got loaded here, if I go into the settings, I'm using currently direct sound, which is the old school driver. We don't want to do that. We want to use Windows Audio, which is a much more up-to-date low latency driver. Now down here it says the buffer size is 480 samples, which is resulting in 10 milliseconds of latency. 10 milliseconds. Now that, does that sound like a lot or a little? It depends really on, on your experience of what that is. But 10 milliseconds isn't very much. It's about the equivalent of standing, I don't know, sort of two to three meters away from your amplifier. That is about the same level of latency that you're getting. And now it's much more playable. And that's great. I mean, that's enough. That might be enough for you. So if you've just got your Surface Pro 6 and you've installed a software synthesizer and you're running the Windows audio drivers, you might get some decent playable sound from your MIDI keyboard. But it's not quite there. There's still a little bit of a drag in it and I think we can do better. And there's a problem with using Windows audio 
which is that a large proportion of the doors and other bits of music software, they just don't support it. You can't run Windows Audio in Pro Tools. You can't use it in Cubase. You can't use it in Ableton Live. You can use it in Studio One, but it's not very good. It doesn't really work very well, but you can use it in Bitwig and Stagelight. So it does really depend on what software you're running. Most virtual instruments that run standalone can access it and give you decent, you know, low latency playback just using those drivers just straight on your desktop. But because so many other things don't support it, it would make sense to use something which they do, and that is ASIO. ASIO, audio system in out, it's been around for donkeys and donkeys years and has been the standard protocol by which audio software on Windows works with audio. ASIO reveals all the inputs and outputs of your audio interface and allows you to route to them and to and from them. It provides very low latency audio. It bypasses the whole Windows sound system so you can have system sounds running at the same time as your audio software. It's a very mature protocol. It knows what it's doing. It works every time and I dearly, dearly wish it was simply part of Windows. But no, Microsoft keep banging on about their Wasapi drivers and it's much, much better these days and that's a great thing. But if it's not gonna work in Cubase, it's not going to work in Pro Tools, it's not going to work in Ableton Live. I mean, Ableton Live, that's the one thing everybody uses on a mobile platform. Then it's, it's no good to us. So what do we do? Well, this is where we come into this thing called ASIO for All. Now, ASIO for All is a very exciting piece of software. It comes in there, it takes your audio drivers and wraps it up in an ASIO wrapper so that any piece of software that supports ASIO can see it and suddenly is able to use your computer's crappy onboard sound. It's a miraculous thing. And not only that, but it allows access at a very low latency, much lower than what the Wasapi drivers tends to use. And that means you're gonna get the best performance, the best response, and the best compatibility, which is awesome. The only downside is that it's a bit flaky, but let me show you what you need to do in order to set it up on the Surface Pro 6, because it's annoyingly complex and a bit tricky, but it can be done. So the first thing you need to do is download ASIO for All from ASIO4, the number four, all.com, and install it onto your computer. The link should be here, somewhere. Once it's installed, you can't see it or get to any of the settings until you run a piece of software which uses it. So within my piano here, I can select at the top, ASIO, and then, bing, it's selected ASIO for all, version two. Excellent, it's come up down here as well, how exciting. And it tells us that it's running at 512 samples, and off you go. Well, let's see. There it is. But as you can probably see, and here, the latency is quite high. It's, it's noticeable, you can feel it. I mean, it says it here that it's, it's using about 11.6 milliseconds, which I would say this feels like much more than that, but it doesn't matter because what ASIO for All does by default is select all of the wrong drivers. And so, although it's working, it's not working in the right way yet. So we have to dig in and have a look. So let me show you how you do that. You should have a show control panel within your piece of software because you may be using a completely different synth to this one. If your piece of software doesn't have a control panel button, well, you will find it under a little green button down here by the clock. Now in here, unfortunately with the, the way the Surface Pro 6 scales its, its display, we're getting kind of overly large text for a small space and it's a bit sort of crammed in here. But the, the panel, control panel for ASIO for All has always been rubbish. It's never been an easy place. But let's not get distracted by these things. Let's have a look in and see if we can work out what the heck's going on. At the top is the Realtek High Definition Audio. That is the onboard sound. Now, as you probably know, the onboard sound has two independent drivers. There's the drivers for the speakers, which are built into the surface, and there's the driver for the headphone socket. They are separate and independent. The reason for that is because the sound experience you get with speakers is different to wearing headphones and Microsoft wanted to design two different listening experiences, which is fair enough. But for our point of view, that just makes it annoying, really. 
but I'd much rather have a system that you plug in headphones and you hear it on the headphones, you plug them out and you hear it on the speakers. That's not what happens because Windows has to change the drivers around and that messes with music software quite royally. But anyway, put that aside for the moment. So within the ASIO for All control panel, we need to get to the advanced settings. So hit the spanner in the bottom right hand corner and that gives us a few extra bits and pieces. The most important thing is it gives us these tiny weenie plus buttons next to the driver over here. Hit the plus button and that's going to reveal our two output drivers. Now the one that says second output, that nearly always refers to the headphone socket. So we're gonna stick with that one. Hit the plus button next to it and you'll get three entries under there. The first one says out two times, 44.1 to 48. The next one says out six times, eight to 192 kilohertz. And the third one says in two times 48. Now the one that's selected at the moment is the six times eight to 192 kilohertz. And that's what's giving us this level of, of latency. Now the reason that that's the wrong one is because that driver is the 5.1 surround sound that you use for posh video playback or gaming or Blu-rays, that kind of thing. It's designed for multimedia and so it has a buffer built into it to allow it to give proper multi-channel audio playback without any glitching and without any trouble. So we don't want to use that, we want to use the other driver, which has the much more sensible two channels of 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. So let's do that. So next to it, to the far left of it, is a tiny little weenie button. It's sort of like an activate button. You click on that and it switches to it. And then this little sort of yellow key thing appears. And the sound's gone, damn it. That little yellow thing, that means that it ain't working. It's ASIO for All's way of saying, oh no, it's, it's bad logic, man. It's just not computing. I'm getting this and I'm getting that. And it's just not, I don't quite understand. And so it, it just doesn't work. Now, as far as I can work out, this little bugger is to do with sample rate. Sample rate inconsistencies. There's sample rates have to be the same within a system in order for it to sync with each other properly. And what I think that is, is that it's, it's just not syncing with its own internal sample rate. Now you can force it to work with a setting over here, which says always resample between 44.1 and 48. That's great. I mean, we could try that out. Yeah, good. Now let's try that. <laughs> no, it's a flipping disaster. It's horrible. No, but actually, funny enough, underneath that horrible noise, the latency is far, far better. But noise, no, we don't want that. So that's not the answer. I've also tried fiddling around within the settings, within the window settings for the audio devices and try to set those to the same sample rate in all sorts of different places. That doesn't seem to work either. Setting it to 44.1 doesn't work, setting it to 48 doesn't work. But thankfully, after a lot of fiddling about and, and mostly working out ASIO for all is just fiddling about, clicking things, unclicking things, I discovered that if you disable the input, then it works. Now the input, the only input on the Surface Pro 6 is the microphone input. It's built into the case, microphone input, that's it. It's not really something that you're gonna use. I, mean, I guess you could argue that you're on the bus and you're gonna to wanna to record the latest lyric that's just popped into your head. And so it's important to have it. But generally speaking, when using the onboard sound on something like the Surface, you are using it for playback. You're using it for instruments, for bits and pieces of virtual instruments, for sequencing, not really for recording audio. If you're gonna record audio, we're back to the USB audio interface again. You're gonna need that. That's a far, far, far better way of doing it. However, in order to get any kind of playback and low latency within ASIO for All, we just have to disable the input. So you do that, you press the little button next to the in one that turns off, the yellow thing goes away, little play button appears. Oh! And we've got very playable piano. Fabulous, that's a lot more like it. 
Within ASIO for All, we also get the opportunity to change the buffer size. This means that we can reduce the buffer if we want lower latency when playing instruments, or we can increase the buffer when we're mixing. We want the CPU to focus more on the plugins than we do on the actual real-time-ness of the playback. However, I've also found that changing the buffer size in some instruments doesn't really seem to make any difference. But that's just one of the quirks of using ASIO for All, which is ultimately a fudge. It's fudging the audio drivers to work in a particular situation. But it also demonstrates how different bits of software, how different doors, how different software synths have different audio engines and ways of using that. And that's kind of interesting in and of itself. So just to recap, and you will need to set this up with every single piece of software that you use ASIO for All with, because it'll start up with a default set to the wrong output, you need to go into advanced settings under the little spanner, open it all up, click on out 44.1 to 48 and disable the input. Do the same if you're using the speakers, just on the other driver. And then it'll work. So now I've got that sorted out, I thought it would be fun just to compare the latency between the Windows Audio, between the ASIO for all, and then my Audio Fuse as well, just to give some kind of demonstration of how they compare and how they differ and why you should be using ASIO for all or ultimately why you should be using a USB audio interface. Right, so just for fun, we're gonna do a little bit of latency comparison because these things are interesting and it's good to have a thorough understanding of what is going on. But of course, latency is also a very murky and mysterious place and we need to not get distracted by actual figures and facts, because tests never really seem to work out that way, at least in my experience. So all we're really trying to do is just to give a comparison of how things work, not exact absolute definites, but more of a flavor of what latency is and how that works and what it actually means or not. Anyway, I'm just gonna show you a couple of tests. Now I know there are ways of doing this properly with uh, loopback cables and that kind of thing and some proper testing software but we can't do that because the surface only has a microphone input and so you're not going to be able to do a loopback thing that's going to record an output back into an input because we don't have that so instead we're going to have to be a little bit inventive and so here's my sort of ad hoc way to measure latency and you can do this at home if you like so to do this, to start with, I'm gonna use Massive from Native Instruments because it's, it's just a good thumping synth. Gives me a nice basic waveform. What I'll probably do is give it a square, smooth square. The purest sound that I can find. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this over to my other computer and record it. At the same time, I'm gonna run the sound from the base station over there and record it as well. So what will happen is that I'll have a real-time sound coming from the base station, the actual base station, and a sound being generated by the computer at the same time via the same note. I'll record it onto the same track, one left, one right, and you should be able to see the delay between the two, the latency between the two. The latency between something which is happening in real time and something that the computer is generating. Does that make sense? Good, so I've got to do a little bit of rewiring first. One of them, is going to go, and the other one, this one here, is gonna go into the back of the base station. Right, so I've got the sound coming out from here, out of the headphone socket, going directly to my computer over there for recording, and I've got the sound of the base station two coming directly out, going into the same two input stereo inputs over there to record a stereo track to put these two sounds side by side. Very interesting when you put these two sounds together because you can hear, you can hear it. You know that there's latency there. Now the audio driver I'm using at this point is the Windows audio driver, the Wasapi one, the low latency one that Microsoft have provided and is much improved on previous ones. But you can, you can hear that, that's amazing. So we just look at the settings themselves before we do the recording. So, in a massive, it looks at things slightly differently. You've got this panel here where you've got Wasapi shared mode, it says at the top, gives you what the audio driver is, and it gives you the samples here, 256 samples, which we would normally say is playable. But is it 256 samples? Is it around, you know, 10, 11 milliseconds? That's what it's supposed to be. Seems unlikely. 
So what I do is I press record over there and I hit this a couple of times. I try to hit it as hard and fast as I can because obviously there's delay in everything that I do. As I press down, there's a finite amount of time for that to take. Does it fire this the same time as it sends MIDI out over USB to hit this? There are all sorts of factors involved. And I don't want to get bogged down in all those sorts of details because I'm trying to show a comparison. So provided that I use the same gear in every test, then those things are going to be more or less the same. And it will be enough, you know, it will be enough. So let's get recording. Simple as that. Then we'll go back into ASIO for all. Buffer size is currently 512. Let's do it at that. And then let's take it down a couple of notches to see how much difference there is. Now where I am sitting here, that sounded about the same as the other one. And it says here that it's giving about 15.6 milliseconds and that has that kind of feel to it, I have to say. So let's bring this down to 256. And just to make sure that takes, I'm going to OK out of that panel, bring it back up again. Yeah, now down to 256, which it reckons is 9.8 milliseconds. Let's give it a go. Certainly better. But you can hear it, you can hear it, man. You can hear it. Okay, let's go down to 128. Is that better? Maybe. One more, down to 64. I don't know, well, I mean, they feel very similar at that level. Now, one thing I found in my testing of various synthesizers on the Surface Pro 6, using ASIO for all, is that the buffer size doesn't always do something. Sometimes it does, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. It's just one of those things. And particularly in a standalone virtual instruments, it seems to get stuck, almost like it has its own buffer in there just to make sure. So what I'm gonna do is cross-check this in Cubase, where I can set up ASIO for all as well. Can't use Windows Audio, so I couldn't do the direct comparison just in Cubase. That's why I wanted to start with it standalone. And also just to show that some things are inconsistent. So I'll load up Cubase, load up Massive, and do the test again to see whether we get any smaller results. And then we'll go over there and analyze the stuff and see what we reckon we've got. So this is the Cubase audio system control panel. If you like, we've got ASIO for all loaded up there. The other options you get under here are the Arturia ASIO, which is for the audio fuse. There's an Avid driver, which nobody really knows what that does, but it's something to do with Pro Tools that we don't ever seem to use. And then there's a generic low latency ASIO driver, which you can use to access the old Windows drivers for onboard sound. So you can use that. And once you've installed Cubase, that appears in all sorts of doors, which enables you to use that generic ASIO wrapper for any onboard audio. It's just that the latency is very, very high. That's why ASIO for all is so much better, kinda. So that's what we've got selected. And then we click on it here in order to configure it. Currently, it seems to be set quite low because the last thing we did was 64 samples. So let's bring that back up to 256 and then we'll test it down to 64 to see if it's any different to what we did before. Okay, official test at 256 then. Good, let's change it, see if we can get it to go any better than that. Taking it down to 128, which reports an output latency of 6.8 milliseconds. Hmm, 6.8, eh? We'll see about that. Now, I'm not hearing the difference. Oh, it's there. The delay between the two. Certainly better than it was a moment ago. So the test, then let's wind it down to 64. I don't know if that's changed at all. <laughs> all I can do is test and cross test, testing one piece of software, testing another to see whether it's the same. I don't know, we'll do this one and then we'll go and have a look. And just for comparison, we'll also do a quick test on the audio fuse. So this is the lowest setting, 64 samples on ASIO for all. It reckons is 5.4 milliseconds. 
We'll test that. I hope I can remember which tests are which. So if we switch it to the Arturia ASIO driver. Now I can't sense any difference in that at all. Can't sense any delay, any difference between the two signals. Is what I'm trying to say. This says the latency is down to uh, three milliseconds, just under three milliseconds. It's set to 64 samples, but in safe mode, so it adds a little bit more latency than it needs to. But let's test it at that. Let's see whether it matches up with what the audio fuse is actually saying that its buffer size should be. So let's test that. Good, that should give us a bunch of figures to play with. Now let's go over and have a look and see what it was. So over on this side in some very bad lighting, I have Sony Vegas or Magix Vegas, which is what I use for my video editing. And I'm recording directly into there onto a stereo track. Just need to disable quantize and snapping. And then we can zoom in to the waveform and have a look at the difference between the two channels, the left and right channel. One came from Massive, one came from the base station. Does that make sense? Good. So we zoom in here and we can see our two waveforms. Which is which? Well, the bottom one is obviously the base station because that's the one that hits first. Top one is the one from the computer. So this first recording is from the Windows Audio. So what we can do is select between the two. I can adjust that very finely if I wish. And then down right in the bottom here, it tells us what that is in milliseconds. Isn't that interesting? So the first one, it gives me I'm going to write it down, old school, is 59 milliseconds. So that's Windows Audio. Now, do you remember what it said in the software? It said that it was uh, 10, 10 milliseconds. So there's a discrepancy there. But as I said before, I don't want to get hung up on the discrepancies because there's potentially all sorts of different things at play. And it's only as scientific as I can sort of make it, I guess. And what we're looking for is a comparison of tests done in the same environment that are going to incur the same sort of errors. Yeah? So let's have a look at the next one. So the next one would have been, would have been here, which would have been 512 samples using ASIO for all. So we get 65 milliseconds. Next up, 256. Okay, now we're back down to 53 milliseconds. Then we had 128, which is 48 milliseconds. And finally, 64 samples gives us 44 milliseconds. So that's interesting. I mean, you could, I don't know, say that somewhere there's 40 milliseconds messing about in there somehow that shouldn't be there, in which case we've got latencies of around 19 milliseconds then 25, 13, 8, and 4. I mean, that would make perhaps more sense because it's not feeling like 40, 50 milliseconds when you're playing it, certainly, because that we know what that feels like, and that feels terrible as far as playing and latency goes. But there is something in there, something in the recording, something in the process that I'm using, which is sticking in a load more milliseconds than we expect. But what we are seeing is that with Windows Audio, the maximum or the best it can do in this situation is 59 milliseconds. And the best that ASIO for All can do is 44. So that's a whole 15 milliseconds better than the Windows Audio. And that, I think, is what's important. Now let's have a look at see what happened in Cubase to see whether those figures are any better. So in Cubase, we started with 256 samples, which is this test here. That comes up with 44, next one was 128, was 42, and finally 64 samples was also 42. So within Cubase then, the latency using ASIO for all was a tiny bit better, only marginally better and probably small enough to fall into the margin of error really, but it did seem that you could get slightly lower latency with ASIO for all in Cubase rather than in standalone Massive. But ultimately these things come down to feel really. And again, getting tied up in the numbers of whether it's 40 milliseconds or 10 milliseconds, it's what feels playable to you. When you put two notes side by side with the base station and uh, Massive coming out of the computer like I did there, 
it's it's weird it's a weird experience for your ears and it becomes much more noticeable when you're actually just playing from a midi keyboard then those things fall into the background it's the same sort of latency you get playing a grand piano or a pipe organ where the sound is being generated but further away from you and because we're musicians and because we're pros we can we can cope with all that sort of stuff so let's have a quick look at what the audio fuse did now the audio fuse was set to three milliseconds and you can see you can see how close they are can't you this is a bit more like it there, for the audio fuse, the reality of what it was is five milliseconds. Five milliseconds. So I'm not getting a, a random 40 milliseconds from anywhere. It's just reporting what it's recording. And I have to stop trying to explain that away. It's just how it is. I think our experience of latency becomes weird and we get distracted by the numbers where we think we know what we're talking about. And in reality, perhaps really we don't. And ultimately, moaning on about the figures oh yeah i can get three millisecond latency i can get 10 millisecond latency is less important than how something actually feels to you so there we are what's the moral of this little story well the moral is probably that you yeah you really do need to be using a usb audio interface in order to get the best uh, playable latency out of your surface it's just the reality however if you need to use the onboard sound, if you just want to plug in a pair of headphones and get making music, you can. You can use the Windows Audio drivers to do that if you wish, because it feels okay. You can get away with it. Or if you want to improve upon that, or if you need to use a door, a proper door like Pro Tools, Cubase, Ableton Live, that kind of thing, then I would highly recommend using ASIO for all in order to give you a decent audio engine within that piece of software. As overall works mostly all the time. I've shown you what settings you need to set every time you use it. And provided that you do that, it should be relatively glitch free. And actually it performs really well. I've run a whole load of synths on the Surface Pro 6 now using ASIO for all, and it works, it works well. And I'll be doing videos all about that kind of performance coming very soon. Similarly, I'm gonna repeat all of these tests on the Microsoft Surface Go. So look out for that one as well, if you're more into the into the petite little surface. I hope that's been helpful and please check out the channel for lots of other videos on surface, on music technology, audio interfaces, software, synthesizers, and all that jazz. And if you're purely interested in what the surface can do, then do check out surfaceproaudio.com, which is where I plaster all my videos and bits and bobs all about that sort of thing. I'm still very much at the beginning of the Surface Pro 6 and what it can do. I haven't yet got into the full details of performance testing and doing projects and bits and pieces, but I have done a number of tests featuring different doors just to make sure it works properly and how to tweak it. So if you've got problems with audio, then you do need to tweak your Surface. And I've got a guide on that, which is also in the channel. Now that we've covered ASIO for all and using the onboard sound, I'll then be moving into using proper external USB audio interfaces in order to do music production. That's next. So stick with us for that. Please subscribe, share it with all your friends. And if you're feeling really daring, you could throw us a couple of quid on Patreon. That's always appreciated. And that really helps me and enables me to make more and more videos like that. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you've got any questions, throw them in the comments. I don't mind. I usually get around to answering everybody's question if I can. And also look out for the monthly news videos and the live stream that we do, where you're welcome to come along and ask me anything you like. So that'll do for now. And in the meantime, go and make some tunes. <laughs>